Let's thoroughly explain the ZGM FA262 PDP Mighty Strike Freedom. This explanation consolidates all the details from novels, character books, director statements, excessively detailed descriptions from watching the movie 30 times, and official documents. There's bound to be information you don't know. We'll cover everything from the disruptor that collapses atoms, nuclear power, hidden dragoons, final battle specifications. The effects of nanoparticles that govern the performance of the Mighty Strike Freedom, to the special techniques used by Kira. Basic Information First, let's look at the basic information of the unit. Model number ZGMFA 262 PDP, named Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. This two-seater unit, as seen in the series, is piloted by Kira, who controls the general operations of the unit, and Lacus, who handles defense and weaponry control. The unit is a modification of the Strike Freedom Gundam that appeared in the previous war, resulting in the completion of Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2. This Type 2, with its back parts replaced from the conventional wing unit to the new wing called MDE-262S. Proud Defender, is what is known as the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. Concept. Next, let's explain the concept of this unit. The original Strike Freedom Gundam was developed and designed with the primary concept of combating multiple targets. Type 2 does not deviate much from this concept, implying that the concept of Type 2 is nearly identical to that of Strike Freedom. The Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam having the same base as Type 2 and incorporating the Golden Blades in the Proud Defender Wing Unit, as Dragoon, suggests that it maintains the one against many concept. However, a new concept has been added to it countering the increasingly prevalent powerful armaments of the era. This can be inferred from the design and materials of the unit. For example, Lacus's use of a lightning attack in a scene, which neutralized Black Knight Squad. Carla's active Dragoon, indicates a countermeasure against Dragoons. Additionally, the Disruptor, equipped in the head can penetrate barriers to attack enemies directly suggesting a countermeasure against the rising use of unmanned units. The equipment of the Futsunamitama, a physical sword, is seen as a countermeasure against the proliferation of Femto technology, armor and beam shields that neutralize beams. Thus, the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam not only maintains the concept of fighting multiple targets, but also incorporates measures against the powerful armaments and defenses that have become common in the Cosmic Era development background. Background of Type 2 The development background of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam begins with the base unit, Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2 which was repaired and modified by Orb Union's Morganro Day after the Strike Freedom was damaged during the Freedom Robbery Incident. The details of the Freedom Robbery Incident are not disclosed, but about half a year before the Seed Freedom storyline, the Freedom was robbed by an unknown party and later shot down by the Kingdom of Foundation's Black Knight Squad, then returned to the Orb Union. Erica Simmons of Morganro Day handled the modifications, primarily as a test of modern technology rather than for combat deployment. Significant changes include alterations to the power source and the cockpit, but most notably, the ability to mount a beam rifle on top of the railgun unit, addressing the armament compatibility issue that Kira faced during the Battle of Orb Union in Cosmic Era 73. These modifications were possibly made in response to the stress Kira experienced in combat. Background of Proud Defender The development of the Proud Defender, the back unit that defines the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam, was led by Albert Heinlein and Kira. This unit faced various issues during its development, including complaints from Albert Heinlein about the technical staff, particularly regarding software malfunctions, as seen in the scenes. Problems with fermion induction suggest difficulties with quantum communication. The completed Proud Defender was initially intended to be equipped on the Strike Freedom Gundam, a plan seemingly contradicted by Kira's surprise at the existence of Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2 at the Orb Union hangar. However, it's inferred that the original plan to equip Rising Freedom was altered due to the Freedom Robbery incident, but reverted to the initial plan once Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2 was quickly repaired and modified by Orb Union. The scene shows that the back parts were switched to Proud Defender during the battle, with Black Knight Squad Carla, transforming it into Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. Comparison with Sibling Units Differentiation from Justice Next, we move on to comparing it with its sibling unit, the Infinite Justice Type 2. However, the differentiation in their concepts has not changed significantly since the Battle of Yakin Do. Therefore, let's revisit the comparison between their bases, the ZGMFX-10A Freedom and the ZGMFX-09A Justice. Initially, Freedom and Justice were designed with opposing concepts. Freedom was envisioned to combat multiple enemies alone, focusing on mid to long range combat. In contrast, Justice, centered around the Fatima O, excels in one on one combat at close to mid range, boasting high mobility and identical basic armaments. Despite both units having almost identical systems, the difference in concept significantly alters their tactical applications. Armaments. Let's take a closer look at each of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam's armaments. Head CIWS. As seen in scene cuts and photos of plastic models, the unit is equipped with head CIWS. Strike Freedom's Vulcan gun has a smaller caliber compared to the ZGM FX-10A in order to process and calculate the aircraft more quickly. There were plans to omit the Vulcan gun from the original Strike Freedom. 
but it is believed that the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam has a similar or evolved version of this armament, though details have not been disclosed yet. High Energy Beam Rifle Next is the High Energy Beam Rifle. The Strike Freedom Gundam was equipped with the MAM-21 Kilo Farad's High Energy Beam Rifle. It is presumed that the Type 2 and Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam are also equipped with a similar weapon. This rifle can be carried in pairs and used either for multi-lock targeting or as a high-powered rifle when connected. This flexibility significantly increases combat options, making it difficult for anyone other than Kira to handle. However, in a scene near Artemis, Athron was seen handling it effortlessly, indicating his high tactical judgment. Also, it has been observed that the output of the beam saber increases after equipping the Proud Defender, suggesting that the output of the high-energy beam rifle may also improve after the upgrade. Beam Saber Next, we look at the Beam Saber. The Strike Freedom Gundam was equipped with the MAM-02G Super Lacerta Beam Saber. It is believed that the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam is equipped with the same. One notable feature of this beam saber is the ambidextrous halberd operation, which allows two sabers to be connected. However, Kira preferred a two-sword fighting style that expands tactical breadth, so he did not use the ambidextrous halberd in the recent movie. As mentioned earlier, the output of the beam saber is observed to increase after upgrading to Proud Defender Beam Shield. Next, we explain the beam shield. The Strike Freedom Gundam was equipped with the MX-2200 beam shield, and it is assumed that the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam has a similar device. This shield allows for the diffusion and neutralization of beam weapons. Xiphias, Railgun. Next is the Waste-Mounted Railgun. The Strike Freedom Gundam was equipped with two MMIM-15E, Xiphias, three railguns. Given that the design of the Type 2's railgun has changed to a more angular shape, its name has likely changed as well, though this has not been disclosed. As mentioned in the development background, it is now possible to mount a beam rifle on top of this equipment. Reducing the time and effort required for immediate railgun use, beam rifle storage, and beam saber usage, making access easier to Bastar Super High Impulse Beam Gun. Next, we examine the Abdominal Beam Cannon. The Strike Freedom Gundam was equipped with the MGX-2235 Calidus Multi-Phase Beam Cannon, which has been replaced with a weapon named the Tabastar Super High Impulse Beam Gun in the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. While it has a drawback of difficult angle control, its power is undeniable. Having neutralized Destiny Gundam's high-energy long-range beam cannon during the Battle of Messiah, it is anticipated that this equipment's output has further increased due to improvements in the enhanced beam armament output from the Proud Defender. However, in a scene during the battle with Shiva, the beam cannon was attacked early on, damaging the weapon, so its effectiveness could not be observed. Convergent Hyperon Beam Cannon Disruptor Next, let's take a look at the EQMY-148 Convergent Hyperon Beam Cannon Disruptor. This equipment has been extensively explained in the recently released second volume of the novel, so let's delve into it. This weapon is a new armament equipped on both the Strike Freedom Type 2 and the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam, utilizing heavy nucleons. Nucleons are a type of elementary particle. This armament is mounted on the head unit. By emitting an extremely thin beam, it can penetrate through shielding and strike targets at ultra-long range. In a scene, it penetrated the Messiah and destroyed three ziggurats deployed behind it. At that time, the output was at 80%. So if fired at 100%, it can be expected to boast even longer range and greater power. Now, how does this weapon work? According to the novel, it utilizes energy emitted from the beam cannon to destabilize the atoms of the target and suppress nuclear fission. That's how the disruptor works. It disrupts the target through atomic destabilization while suppressing nuclear fission interference. When the disruptor was used in the scene, the screen momentarily inverted colors. Reading the novel, it seems this wasn't just an effect. The novel describes the disruptor as an invisible blade. Except for the initial flash upon firing, the trajectory of the beam may not be visible to the naked eye. Much like how only specific lenses can visualize infrared rays, it's likely the screen inversion was meant to convey this invisibility. However, due to energy consumption concerns, the Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2 cannot fire this weapon. Furthermore, approval from Lacus, the Compass's supreme commander, is necessary for its use. Positioning it more as a tactical weapon rather than an anti-MS weapon. The novel also mentions the application and usage control of this weapon. These restrictions were self-imposed by Kira due to its potency. After firing this beam, there tends to be a significant decrease in nanoparticle count. However, it's worth noting that the disruptor was used once during a melee combat interlude against the Black Knight squad, Carla, suggesting a somewhat broad range of applicability. Futsunamitama. Next is the Futsunamitama, a physical sword mounted on the right wing of the Proud Defender. Recent statements in the Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Series Grand Prix 2024. Final results announcement special program indicated that Futsunamitama is considered an anti-ship sword, likely formalizing its classification as such moving forward. This weapon, resembling a Japanese katana, was used in a dual-wielding manner with a beam saber in the right hand during a scene. It was heavily utilized towards the end of combat against the Black Knight squad, 
proving effective against Femdo technology armor. It is assumed to have been developed as a countermeasure against the proliferation of anti-beam armor technology. According to director Fukuda, this katana is made by Orb Union and was originally equipped by the Akatsuki Gundam before being lent to or given by the Freedom. This suggests it is indeed produced by Orb Union. Additionally, director Fukuda has said that it is better to finish plastic models in as dark a color as possible. He also said that the sword was designed to avoid light interference. Materials coated with Vanta Black, the world's darkest substance that absorbs about 99% of light, blend into shadows or dark backgrounds, making them difficult to spot. Therefore, Futsunamitama, which has the property of blocking light, is effective for general pilots. However, since Kira's opponent this time was a Kord's Orphe, Katana's light blocking didn't seem to be that effective. Proud Defender Next, we look at the Proud Defender, a main piece of equipment for the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam, consisting of 8 white wing binders, 2 glowing golden wings, and 8 small golden mini wings. These mini wings, as detailed in the schematics, are detachable, suggesting their original use as dragoons. The primary weapon of the Proud Defender is widespread lightning dispersing from the unit as controlled nanoparticles, neutralizing nearly all forms of attacks including solid bullets, beam weapons, and dragoons. The golden color of the dragoons implies the inclusion of the Yada no Kagami function, generating electricity without damaging the dragoons themselves. Similar to the neutron stamper technology, which produces a similar effect, but differs as it was shown breaking after use, the golden wings of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam remain intact, indicating a Yada no Kagami-like functionality. Defender's Electric Shock Next, let's explain the thunder attack used by the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. The Defender features special equipment that generates lightning. According to the setting data, it's created by controlling nanoparticle emissions. In a scene, it locked onto numerous missiles, dragoons, and enemy warships simultaneously, shooting them all down. Although this attack has been mysterious so far, the recently released second volume of the novel provided more detailed explanations. Why does lightning emanate from the Defender? In short, the nanoparticle emissions generated by the Defender absorb specific wavelengths of electromagnetic waves, generating heat. This heat creates a magnetic field around it, causing electrons absorbed by the nanoparticles to move, generating electricity. Essentially, the lightning isn't generated by the nanoparticles alone but occurs when they overlap with something else. In the Seed series, truly inexplicable or fantastical phenomena that can't be explained by scientific principles rarely occur. Similarly, this lightning is explained with specific sulfur monofluoride-like descriptions, providing a high level of plausibility and satisfaction. Type 35 Prototype Advanced Railguns Next, we examine the Type 35 Prototype Advanced Railguns equipped on the Type 2. It is implied that this railgun was designed as a countermeasure to the Black Knight's Femdo technology armor, which nullifies beam attacks. The Type 2 was outfitted with these railguns in addition to the high-energy beam rifle. Similar armaments are also equipped on units like the Gelgoog Menace and Destiny Gundam. Super Dragoon not to be forgotten is the Super Dragoon equipped by the Type 2. This equipment, a swarm weapon, was also mounted on the old Strike Freedom. However, this Super Dragoon has been updated with new features in the Type 2, as mentioned below. There are a total of 8 Dragoon units equipped. In the battle against Karla, these units were used in combat, clashing Dragoon against Dragoon. However, due to Accord's predictive abilities and the high specifications of Karla, 3 units were lost initially. Subsequently, the remaining Dragoons were retracted into their binders for defense. This was because of the new shield deployment feature of the Dragoons. This feature allows the formation of a beam-like barrier by deploying three Dragoon units at intervals, which withstood the fierce pursuit of Karla and Shiva without being shot down. Trivia's additional information from the novel. Finally, let's look at the overly detailed trivias about the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam and the latest information from the recently published novel. Combat Styles Next, we explain combat styles. Director Fukuda previously mentioned in X that the Freedom, Justice, and Destiny Gundams each have distinct fighting styles. Freedom is inspired by a specific dual-wielding stance from a Japanese samurai movie. Justice is themed around a twin sword motif similar to the ambidextrous halberd. Destiny Gundam contrasts with an Otachi Japanese big katana motif. However, these motifs are not only for aesthetic reasons but also have narrative purposes. For example, Kira prefers dual-wielding to the ambidextrous halberd for a wider range of tactics which is why he hasn't used the ambidextrous halberd since C Destiny. Conversely, as previously mentioned, Athron favors tricky and high-speed combat. Having one hand free allows for spontaneous boomerang throws, rifle shots, or unexpected slashes with the ambidextrous halberd, enabling him to disorient his enemies during combat. Shin prefers rapid assaults and short, decisive melee engagements. Shin's use of boomerangs is not a feint like Athron's, but to dive into the enemy's midst for a quick annihilation with the Arendite a large anti-ship laser sword. Chin's preference for powering through with Arendite suggests a fondness for this type of combat. Type 2's Combat Scene 
Next, I want to explain the combat techniques of the Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2. This scene is packed with technique. Initially, Type 2 deploys 8 Dragoons, but all are shot down by Orphe's Black Knight Squad Carla Dragoons. In the first strike, Kira loses 3 of the Dragoons. Observing this scene closely, it's evident that Orphe's Dragoons anticipate Kira's firing line, narrowly avoiding the attacks from Kira's Dragoons. Conversely, Orphe's Dragoons, equipped with a Beam Saber deployment feature, destroy Kira's Dragoons by engulfing them. This showcases the high performance of the Black Knight and Orphe's adept use of Dragoons. After losing 3 Dragoons in the initial skirmish, Freedom manages to recall 5. This was possible because the Dragoons are equipped with a shield generation feature, needing at least 3 units for shield deployment, which Kira promptly utilized. Moreover, during shield deployment, Kira limits the direction of incoming attacks by flying low. Though Type 2 was cornered in combat, Kira's defensive techniques were remarkably clever. Judging the Dragoon battle disadvantageous, Kira finally resorts to using Freedom's Vulcan. He then performs a full burst against incoming missiles, but with most Dragoons lost, his firepower significantly decreases. At this point, one of the four wings is lost, without Boitour Lumiere emanating from it, a detail noted. When Shiva joins the battle, Freedom deploys two shields simultaneously, overlaying them to form a large shield. However, this leads to a perilous situation as Shiva begins attacking from the side. Carla and Shiva's rapid melee attacks force Kira into a defensive posture, using shields to endure and evade rather than counterattack. Another notable defense technique was Kira firing the railgun at the ground when cornered, creating a distraction and levitating his unit to control the distance from the advancing Black Knight. In a melee with Carla, even as Kira uses the beam shield to block close combat, he attempts a point-blank railgun shot, which Carla anticipates. Despite the focus on mighty strike freedom, Gundam's achievements, Type 2 shows considerable resilience, surviving against overwhelming odds through defensive techniques. Notably, Type 2 was equipped with two railguns, alongside two beam rifles, carrying one railgun on the waist side skirt and another on the back. Essentially making it a walking arsenal in its final battle specification, with two beam rifles and two railguns. Contrast in the battle of my FLI and Carla. Next, I want to explain the battle between the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam and Black Knight Squad Carla. This battle presents a contrast between couples. Carla's pilots sit in a front and back formation, whereas Kira and Lacus sit side by side in the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. It's as if the show is contrasting Orphe's master-servant relationship with the equal partnership of Kira and Lacus. Further examination of Black Knight Squad Carla's combat scene, right after Orphe declares. Then perish with your foolish love, shows Ingrid silently obeying and operating Ziggurat via a touch panel. Conversely, Lacus doesn't just leave it to Kira she controls the nanoparticles with her psychic sensitivity to protect freedom. The master-servant dynamic of Orphe and Ingrid versus the cooperative equality of Kira and Lacus offers a brilliant contrast. Furthermore, Ingrid's frantic touch panel operation and Lacus' psychic multi-lock, using only her arms further highlight the differences in their skills and abilities. Melee Combat Next, I'd like to explain the melee combat scene with Carla. This is the scene following the use of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam's Disruptor. Observing this melee scene closely, you can see that the pink light has disappeared from freedom, leaving only gold particles floating around. Furthermore, the density of the gold particles has decreased. Additionally, there's a visual effect where gold particles gather on the forehead during the disruptor firing scene, indicating that the density of nanoparticles is reduced right after firing the disruptor. This means the moment immediately after firing the disruptor is a vulnerability of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. Carla engaging in melee combat was a very sound decision. Melee combat is not influenced by nanoparticles and Orphe wanted to defeat freedom at a time when the nanoparticle density was low, making his judgment quite accurate. However, in the actual melee combat, Kira proved to be more skilled. Freedom countered Carla's melee attacks with one arm, deployed the beam shield while holding a beam saber, and blocked Carla, shooting the disruptor at point-blank range. This momentary scene might be easily missed, but the second disruptor shot was fired at point-blank range, destroying Carla's right arm. At this moment, there's also a brief inverse color effect. Carla's approach to close combat was also a correct strategy to dodge the disruptor, which, despite its power, has a very thin hit detection, making it highly avoidable at close range. This moment of thin nanoparticle density during melee combat was Orphe's last chance to win. Dual Wielding Stance Next, I want to explain the dual wielding stance of Freedom. Freedom's dual wielding stance is different from any stance Kira has shown before. Why is that? Kira's typical dual wielding stance is as shown in images, but the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam assumes a more defensive stance. There are two reasons for this. The first is the connection between Freedom and the Junk Guild. The stance for Futsunamitama resembles the stance of the Astray Red Frame's Gerber Astrait. It's likely that when hastily loading Freedom onto the Orb Union ship, Kira added his twist to the dual-wielding arrangement. Based on the OS originally used for Astray, 
The second reason is to protect Lacus. The cockpit area of Freedom was severed in the Battle of Shura. Observing Freedom's stance in this scene, the left side of the body faces the enemy, protecting the right side. Meaning, Kira, sitting on the left side of the cockpit, chooses motions that expose him to the enemy to shield Lacus. Despite Lacus playing a significant role in the final battle, Kira was also careful in his motions to protect her. When Lacus first boarded, Kira barely moved the unit to avoid putting a strain on her, showcasing his kindness. Freedom's UI. Next, let's look at Freedom's UI. When Type 2 powers down, the overpressure lamp lights up. Additionally, on the left side of the UI, the PS armor's load gauge is full. Since the gauge is zero at sortie, the higher it goes, the more dangerous it becomes. When Type 2 phase shifts down, the gauge reaches max, surpassing caution to critical. There's also a voltage reduction warning, indicating a drop in voltage, matching the display of the rising freedom. Regarding Type 2's power down, the director mentioned in an interview with Great Mechanics G, Type 2 was in a pinch, but it wasn't because the energy dropped, but because it was about to exceed the phase shift's impact resistance limit, it was somewhat overheating, and it was cooled by the Proud Defender. Indeed, the impact resistance gauge was full, and after merging with the Proud Defender, the gauge recovered to about half. The word, overheating, matches the UI display of overpressure. Conclusion This concludes the comprehensive explanation and analysis of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. With the release of the novel version and the start of plastic model sales, a vast amount of intricate details about the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam has already been disclosed, and even more detailed information, especially regarding its power source and nanoparticles, is expected to be revealed, promising further surprises for us, the audience. Which of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam's armaments do you particularly like? Would you like to experience the disruptor? Please share your thoughts in the comment section.